I believe in Lagos. I believe in opportunities. I believe in youth empowerment, Jare. I believe in big business. I believe Lagos is incredible. Together, we can build the Lagos of our dreams. I am Akimu Miyambo. for governor of Lagos State. Every story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories round the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello and welcome to Core TV Primetime News. I am Ebulomo Atikunle in our major story. Amnesty International claims Nigeria's military declines its warning of brutal Boko Haram attacks on the northeast towns of Baga and Monguno. Also in this program, controversial policeman Joseph Umbu takes over Zone 2 command of Nigeria Police Force vows to deal ruthlessly with anybody who crosses his path. Lagos Governor Babatunde Fashola slams PDP governorship candidate in the state over tax evasion. And outside Nigeria, Indonesia's search and rescue agency says 92 victims still missing after an Air Asia plane crash could have been swept away or lost on the seabed. Amnesty International on Wednesday claimed that Nigeria's military tab brass were warned of brutal Boko Haram attacks on the northeast towns of Baga and Monguno but failed to take action. The January 3rd onslaught against Baga is feared to have killed hundreds, if not more, and destroyed thousands of homes, while the takeover of Monguno last weekend was seen as a major setback for the security forces. Amnesty International said it received information from senior military of officers and other sources indicating that defense officials were told about Boko Haram's plans to attack both towns but did not act on requests to send reinforcement. Amnesty added that troops in the town in the extreme north of Bernu State reported a build-up of insurgent fighters in the area before so the attack. So we have clear evidence that the highest levels of the Nigerian military knew about the attack on Baga uh, up to two months in advance and did not take adequate measures to protect civilians. We've seen Boko Haram really go from strength to strength in the last year. In 2014 alone they killed more than 4,000 civilians and we believe they've taken over control, sorry, taken control of over 20 major towns in the region. So more needs to be done to protect civilians, whether that's by changes to the way the military operates or by ensuring that they, their safe passage out of areas that are threatened by Boko Haram, uh, the government must be doing more. We believe that there are challenges in capacity of the Nigerian military, which they are trying to address. Uh, the military has been uh, seeking international cooperation 
to strengthen um, their army through training, through intelligence sharing. Um, so, so some measures are being taken, but what we the the pattern that's emerged is that immediate steps aren't being taken to protect civilians. Newly posted Assistant Inspector General of Police in charge of Zone 2 Command, Joseph Umbu, has warned troublemakers to steer clear his way. Umbu, while taking over from the departing AIG in charge of the zone, Abubakar Manko, says he will review the number of people moving around the zone with security men, with a view to ensuring that only those who have the right to security around them get same. Will be disciplined. You must be ready to do your job, and there must be no lawlessness. We must be organized. If you are a civilian, obey the law. If you don't obey the law, whatever your status will bring you down and will take you to court. And then the misuse of my policemen, I will say no. If you are not entitled to policeman, if you have, I will draw. And if you insult my policeman, I will not take it lightly with you. I will prosecute you. Meanwhile, Inspector General of Police Suleiman Abba has ordered the prosecution of suspected political thugs and miscreants arrested during ongoing crackdown on political violence in some parts of the country. Police spokesman Emmanuel Ujiku said in a statement issued in Abuja that the suspects would be prosecuted regardless of their status. He confirmed that a number of suspects have been arrested in connection with outbreak of violence during political campaigns at different locations. The police also maintained that it will not condone any act of hooliganism from any quarter while urging politicians to play the game by the rules. The National Peace Committee, headed by former head of state Abdus Salami Abubakar, is concerned about the trend of hate speech and political violence in spite of the Abuja Accord on Nonviolence. The committee, which was set up in the aftermath of the accord, has consequently slated a meeting for next week to take a stand on the matter. Catholic Bishop of Sokoto Matthew Kuka disclosed this at a news conference in Abuja. Pai Samuel has the rest of the story. The National Peace Committee is a fallout of the Abuja Accord signed by all political parties and their presidential candidates. The panel of eminent Nigerians is to, among others, monitor the implementation of the Accord. But few days after it was signed, the committee members are not impressed with the political class. Bishop Matthew Koka is one of the 16 members of the committee. We pledge to refrain from campaigns that will involve religious, ethnic and tribal profiling both by ourselves and by all agents acting in our names. To refrain from making or causing to make in our names and that of our party any public statements, pronouncements, declarations or speeches that have the capacity to incite any form of violence before, during and after the elections. The committee members are particularly worried over inflammatory comments by politicians. Former Foreign Affairs Minister Bolaji Akinyemi says the panel will monitor compliance by all parties. The peace accord was, on, was signed, I suppose, in 14th January. 14th January. Yeah, 14th January. And this committee has arisen of that. This committee could not have been set up. This particular committee. However, that is not to say that attempts at talking and influencing political activities by political stakeholders had not been going on before even the peace accord. The Interparty Advisory Council also reiterated its commitment to ensuring a violence-free polls. It reaffirmed its readiness to take legal action against any party found to have breached the Abuja Accord. What have we done so far was so enormous to have brought us to this particular point. Not only do we synergize with INEC, the demand by the political party to have constant meetings with INEC has given a lot of results. We usually have quarterly meetings before. In fact, before INEC doesn't even listen to us. But recently they started listening to us. We have meetings with them. We now understand their own pain and they understand ours. And then we come to a meeting point. The committee held an inaugural meeting last Sunday. 
but is now set for a larger meeting next week to take a look at the attitude of politicians and supporters to the non-violence agreement. Pyro Samuel, Core TV News, Abuja. Lagos governorship candidates of the People's Democratic Party, Jimmy Agbaje, and his All Progressives Congress counterpart, Akimu Miambodi, have pledged to ensure that the forthcoming general elections will be peaceful in the state. They spoke in Lagos after signing uh, a peace accord by all political parties at the state police headquarters. Kazim Kasali's report is presented from our studio. This warm embrace and their throwing on banters by the two major gladiators in the Lagos State Governorship race, Akiwu Miambodi and Jimmy Agbaje, after signing of the peace accord, symbolizes the charge by the State Commissioner Kayo De Adiranti for all parties to work towards a free, fair, and non violent elections. For us to assure you that we're going to give you 100% security without bringing you on board, uh, that, that is just to me far from being uh, the ideal thing. And uh, you know if you know that Lagos uh, is the business epicenter of this country. We've got to do everything together and ensure that we have an election that is devoid of violence, election that is devoid of intimidation, election that is generally acceptable. The resident electoral commissioner in Lagos, Akin Rebi, also assured all the parties that all measures have been put in place to ensure successful polls. The ballot papers will be color coded. In elections that we had since 2011, in governorship elections in Kobe, in Payesa, in Cross River, in Kebi, in Adamawa, in Ondo, in the Kitty, as well as in Oshu, the, color, the ballot papers have been color coded. There will be a specific color for a particular number of states. So if you print your own papers, you do not know the colors you are going to use. And if you want to put them onto the field, you don't know which color you want to a particular movement. Again, to protect the integrity of the electoral process. Speaking after signing the peace document, Agbaji and Ambode say they are optimistic that the elections will be violence free. I've been an advocate of uh, violence free elections. Uh, when you want to serve the people, uh, you don't need to be violent about it if it's service uh, f to the benefit of the people. So for me, it's something that uh, I wholeheartedly support and uh, no reservations whatsoever. We want it to be peaceful. We've tried all our best to make sure that our campaign has been violent free. And that's why, you know, we are supporting this agreement today that no violence should ever occur in Lagos. And Whoever has been doing that or whatever party has been doing that, at least with this agreement now, it, it behoves on all of us that we must keep the peace and ensure that we all have a violent free election. Despite agreeing to the peace accord, political observers are of the opinion that all stakeholders must match their commitment with action in order to guarantee peaceful elections. Lagos State Governor Babatunde Fashola has accused the PDP governorship candidate in the state, Jimmy Agbadi, of tax evasion through his company, JK Pharmacy. Fashola, who stated this at the 8th Lagos State Taxation Forum on Wednesday, says regular tax payment remains the only viable means of ensuring effective development in the country. Abiola Luwali's report is presented from our studio. The governing, according to Fashola, is meant to seek the support of both private individuals and corporate bodies in the drive by the state government to ensure prompt payment of taxes. Fashola will use the occasion to appreciate residents for paying their taxes promptly, says. Developments recorded in the state are made possible through internally generated revenues. And this is what we have built together. If you go to the Badaki Expressway, and you will see the progressive expansion of a six-lane highway into a ten-lane highway. And you will see four rail stations already built. If you drive on the Eco Bridge and you see the pillars now showing that the rail is headed to Marina, you must feel proud that your taxes have to build that. He, however, called on the residents to avoid voting for a tax evader as their next governor. 
claiming that JK Pharmacy, owned by Lagos PDP governorship candidate Jimmy Agbaje, is yet to pay the 2009, 2010, and 2011 land use charge to the state government. JK Pharmacy has not paid land use charge for 2009, 2010, 2011, and 2012. They paid in 2013 and in 2014. I think as the election was coming close, they tried to. They are owing our state one minimum six hundred and twenty nine thousand and sixty four naira sixty two call. Land use charge, grand rent. Look how government collects from it. Look how government has responsibility for primary education. Yes, it is warming their taxes. Is this person a good citizen? This is the man who wants to be. Your next the event witnessed presentation of awards to individuals and corporate bodies for being tax compliant. Fear grows as federal government confirms presence of bird flu in 11 states. Find out more after this timeout. Please stay with us. From the west to the east, the north, and to the south of our country, the APC with their governors have been busy building a better life for Nigerians. The APC with their governors have built more roads, schools, bridges, hospitals, universities, and independent power plants, generated more internal revenue, and created more jobs than the rest of the Federation combined. Now, imagine what we could do when we are the federal government. Vote for change! Vote! Your account is too low for this call. Never get stranded with MTN Extra Time. You can now borrow airtime and pay back at your next recharge. Dial star 606 hash now to enjoy the new MTN Extra Time. MTN, everywhere you go. Thank you for being there. You're still watching Core TV Primetime News. And here is a quick reminder of our major stories. Amnesty International claims Nigeria's military declined its warning of brutal Boko Haram attacks on the northeast towns of Baga and Mongunu. Controversial policeman Joseph Umbu takes over Zone 2 command of Nigeria Police Force, vows to deal ruthlessly with anybody who crosses his path. Lagos Governor Babatunde Fashola slams PDP governorship candidate in the state over tax evasion. You can also reach us on our social media platform. On Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Core TV News. On Twitter, at Core TV News MG. And for videos on YouTube, it's youtube.com forward slash Core TV, leave a space, then news. Following his endorsement by the Afeni Ferry Group on Tuesday, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, President Goodluck Jonathan, breezed into Democracy Park in Akure during the state capital on Wednesday to address party faithful as it continues his second term campaign rally. He pleads for votes and calls for unity among members of the party in Undo State to make the party's chance brighter at the coming polls. Rashid Rashid has more in this report. The Democracy Park venue of the PDP presidential rally was filled to the brim with party faithful as the Jonathan campaign team births in Akure. The PDP in the state, which just merged with the Labour Party, vows to support President Goodluck Jonathan.
the Afedeferi endorsement of Jonathan in the words of the party leadership is a good sign and a signal that Jonathan will carry the day in the southwest. The division in the Ondo State PDP eventually played out on the campaign ground. The president, promising to bring more dividends of democracy, pleads for unity among party members to brighten the party's chances in the state. With endorsements of presidential candidates and mammoth crowd greeting their campaign rallies, it may be said that these candidates are having swell time. But in truth, the effectiveness and reality of gatherings like this will be the result of the February 14th presidential election. But before that day, Nigerians are to enjoy the campaigns of their presidential candidates while it lasts. Rashid Rashid for TV News, Akure. The federal government has described the position of former central bank governor Charles Solido as an intellectual harakiri. It also says his five-year tenure as the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria was a disaster for the banking sector. Minister of Finance Ngozi okonjo wiala said through a statement issued by a special advisor on communications, Paul Mwabwiku, that the artic article was filed with abusive language. The minister also accused Solido of misquoting economic facts and turning statistics on their heads to justify a hatchet job. The governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party in Plateau State, Guang Pojak, has promised the people that he will not repeat the mistakes of his predecessors, especially that of incumbent governor Juna Jang. Pojak, who made this known in Pakshin when his campaign train visited the area, called on the people to ignore prophets of doom who have predicted unfavorable outcome for the 2015 elections. Paul Jack, who is currently the senator representing Plagius North at the National Assembly, added that he and his colleagues in the administration have learned a lot and are now willing to put to use the beauty of the experiences. It will be a very dangerous year for Nigeria. But as you can see from our faces here, we come from diverse backgrounds. We are united in one purpose, that we want to conduct an election that will usher in a new era, a new plateau state, a plateau that is determined to bring brothers together regardless of any differences. And I will work for the progress of our land and will ensure that this country remains united rather than break down. Every father is for the children to grow up to be better than them. And today, we are praying that as we move into greater together, as we get ready in this 2015, we will be able to put up a government that will be greater and greater and greater. And that those who will come behind us will also do better than us. As we do better than our parents, they should also do better than us. And that is the idea behind a generational shift. And that is why we believe that while the old men dream dreams, the young men should see visions and walk in that direction. Former Oyo State Governor and the governorship candidate of a court party in the state, Rashid Ladoja, says he wants to return as governor because he's not impressed with the performance of the present administration, which, according to him, has made so many unfulfilled promises to the people. Omotai Alo has more in this report.
Amidst cheers, La Dolce and his campaign team toured Oluyoli local government to address the supporters and the programs intended for the state once he marches the next governor. These supporters state while they will vote for Ladaja at the February elections. See now, this man where they get, he no good at all. He's not a responsible somebody, he's not a good woman being. He destroyed our shop. My shop is there for Ogunpa there. They don't destroy my shop. I no go anywhere now. Now I'm at the seat. So I don't get any job now. You don't destroy my shop. So I don't want that man to continue in this or your state again. Let him go. I'm a banker, retired banker. But I know he did a lot. That is why I joined this accord. I will be one of them that will be campaigning for Nadroja to enter. We need to try another person because let's take a look of um, Oyo State recently. We've never had, there is no only governor that abused eight years. So let's forget that um, the, previous, uh, the previous governor that is on the region now, let's forget that it's going to um, come in. So let's create another chance for our new governor, which is. Um, Ladoja, who acknowledged the support of the masses, plus the current administration for failing to care for the downtrodden. <laughs> The former governor also confessed that the campaign has continuously revealed areas that need development. Omota Yualo, Core TV News, Ibadan. Following the ongoing question struggle as to who becomes the next governor of Imo State, Imo State students in their thousands have endorsed the incumbent Roches Okorocha to continue what they called is good leadership. According to them, Okorocha is the best governor Imo State has ever had. They said if for nothing at all, they will continue to love and support him for the free education he has given the youth of the state. Some equally affirm that the negative stories about Okorocha are fabricated by his opponents who are desperately seeking power and assured him of their earnest support. I can't really attend the students. So my point of view, I would 
Having visited the incumbent governor at the Owele Plaza along Okigwe Road and done with the short meeting, the left its place and took over the streets of Oweri as they ran around the eastern heartland metropolis. They also converged on the Freedom Square where they demonstrated their strong love for the governor. The Nigerian authorities say bird flu has now spread to 11 states, but government officials insist that it has not reached an epidemic level. Speaking at an emergency stakeholders meeting in Abuja, Minister of Agriculture Akinwumi Additional says the country now needs to trigger additional emergency measures to contain the spread of the virus. He also disclosed that the federal government is prepared to compensate affected farmers. Staff of the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital are determined more than ever to press home their demands from the federal government. The staff have, however, turned to God for intervention as all efforts to ensure the federal government see reason have fallen on deaf ears. Rashid Rashid brings us more. Members of the staff of the National Union of Health and Allied Professionals converged on the Union Secretariat for no other reason than their close to three-month-old strike to deliberate on the non-response of the federal government to their numerous demands. Numerous, but everything bordered on welfare of staff, better working conditions. We are asking for restructuring of the health sector. For instance, some of our members have been on the same level for more than six, seven, eight years, some 15 years. The ministry is saying that people cannot reach the level 15 as directors, which is contrary to the approved scheme of service for workers. So that's one of the reasons. Another thing, we are asking government to release a new circular concerning the retirement age of workers from 60 years to 65. We are asking for the release of adjusted salary structure and have been done for NME. The one was done last year after just a space of 10, 10 days. Government has been on our own for almost two years now, they have not done it. And so this one is killing the spirit of collective bargaining. And some other numerous things I can read it to you, if you will permit. A visit to some of the departments in the teaching hospital shows empty words as there was nobody to attend to while the patients have equally been forcefully discharged. Carrying placards with various inscriptions, the union members called for the urgent resolution of the crisis which they say is affecting and have a serious toll on healthcare provision in the country. They promise to resume work as soon as the federal government accedes to their demand and wonder why it's taken so long after obtaining a court injunction on the matter. Uh, we, the, our nation executive have tried a lot. We have been calling this uh, strike on and off for almost 12 times simply because the federal government does not abide by the uh, MOU. And the only thing that matters most is let them release the circular. The NIC got, court are giving out the judgment, and up to now, that circular has not been released. The, the, our executive have been trying so many times, we go on a uh, strike, then before the expiration, they call off the strike. More than 12 times. More than 12 times. So the relativity of salary has to be released. They have done for the medical doctors, and don't see any reason why such a uh, gesture cannot be given to the health sector too. They also offer prayers to seek God's intervention over the industrial dispute. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Ilori. We'll take another break now and we'll return with business, sports and other stories from outside Nigeria. Please don't go away. You can collect your permanent photos card BBC at your local government office until January 31st. Uh -huh. Collect your PVC. Person can you carry? Are we now for MP?
Cash pass. You see the look? Ah, plenty, plenty people don't they win 10 million naira every week and 1 million naira every day. To win, just dial star 170 hash for free and correct a hoof with the word you. Where that at if your generator or phone, you fit win all for free every day. MTN, everywhere you go. And now to business stories. Ecoelectricity Distribution Company, EKEDC, has begun the tender process of the planned embedded power generation project. The notice for the tender is contained in a statement signed by the Assistant General Manager, Corporate Communications of the company, Idemudua. Idemudia Godwin. According to the statement, the tender is part of effort to actualize the company's embedded generation project, a pre-bid conference with representatives of the companies and organizations that earlier been pre-qualified for the projects. Also, the Deputy Managing Director of EKEDC, Ramesh Nara Yanan, said the purpose of the pre-bid conference was for Nigeria was for Nigeria to be able to prepare for all that is in view. Meanwhile, Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission on Wednesday licensed Trump Bay Power Generation Limited to operate 500 megawatts power plant located at Yamalto local government area of Gombe State, which is a coal-fired power plant. The Minister of Finance, Ngozi Okonjo Iwila, said on Wednesday that 22,000 Nigerian graduates benefited from the federal government's graduate internship program. The program was meant to increase the employability of the graduates by enhancing their skills. The scheme targets up to 50,000 unemployed graduates in the 36 states of the Federation and FCT. No fewer than 22,000 graduates have so far been placed on the program. She says the Good Luck Jonathan administration was providing an average of about 1.4 million jobs per year by driving quality growth in key sectors of the economy. The sectors include agriculture, financial services and the creative industries such as the Nollywood. Also, the community services scheme under Shopee was developed to empower young unskilled Nigerians, women and people with disabilities. The government borrowed in 2010 to pay an unprecedented 53.7% wage increase to all categories of federal government employees as demanded by labor. The total wage bill rose from 857 billion naira in 2009 to about 1.4 trillion naira in 2010 and as a result domestic borrowing increased from 200 billion naira in 2007 to about 1.1 trillion naira in 2010 to meet the wage payments. CME Europe said it plans to launch a euro denominated cocoa Futures contract on March 30, just days before rival Ice Futures Europe introduces a similar contract. The launch of a Kirko Futures contract for physical delivery marks CME's group's entry into deliverable soft commodities. ICE Futures Europe announced this month it would launch a euro denominated contract in April. CME Europe will also launch a cash settled dollar denominated cocoa futures contract in March 30 as it seeks to break ICE's current dominance of cocoa futures trading. ICE currently operates two cocoa futures contracts, one denominated in sterling and the other in dollars. The currency of the world's top cocoa grower, Ivory Coast, the CFA franc, is also pegged on the euro. According to CME Group, customers will also be able to take advantage of the margin efficiencies available from having built contracts cleared by CME Clearing Europe. It says demand for cocoa products, especially chocolate, is expected to grow rapidly and has the potential to pace supply through 2020. And now we join Sabena Izoku for the stock market report for today. Court TV News Stock Market Report is brought to you by MTN. MTN.
everywhere you go. Hello there and welcome to the Stock Market Report segment with me, Sabena Zuku. The equities market on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange closed on a positive note today as the All Shares Index appreciated to 0.16% to close at 29,907.66 basis points. The market capitalization increased in the same manner to close at 9.96 trillion naira. In all, a total volume of 242.7 million units of shares valued at 3.67 billion naira were exchanged in 3,892 deals. On the gainer side, Guinness stopped the gainer's chart to close at 131 Naira 99 Kaba with a gain of 2 Naira 99 Kaba, followed by 40 Oil, Unilever, PZ Carson, and Siplet Oil. On the flip side, West African production company topped the chart, trailed by Nigerian Breweries, Flour Mill, Owando Oil, and Red Staric. Meanwhile, Access Bank topped the traders' chart, followed by Unilever, Dynamon Bank, First Bank of Nigerian Holdings, and United Bank of Africa. Just before we wrap up the stock market report, here is the currency trade for today. Court TV News Stock Market Report is brought to you by MTN. MTN, everywhere you go. Thank you very much, Sabena. And now to sports. EMS kit manufacturing company are in the running to replace Adidas as the new kit sponsors of the Super Regals following the expiration of Nigeria deal with the German-based sport Wea Giant. The company displayed their proposed design for the Super Regals on their social media feed, saying the proposal is based on news of the Super Regals yet to get a supplier. In August, Adidas confirmed they would not be renewing the deal with Nigeria, which expired in December, and AMS that presently kits Niger Republic and Sudan appeared to be in touch with the Nigerian Football Federation, who claimed they are in talks with Adidas to renew their deal with Nigeria. However, it appears talks have stalled and AMS are currently proposing to replace Adidas. Portuguese great Luis Figo has become the latest shock candidate for the role of FIFA president. The former sport in Lisbon, Barcelona, Real Madrid and Inter Milan forward 42 joins David Ginola in the race to replace Sir Blatter as boss of world football's governing body. Prince Ali of Jordan, Dutchman Michael van Prague and Jerome Champagne are also would-be presidential challengers. Blatter has been FIFA boss since 1998 and intends to run for a fifth term. All potential candidates are yet to register their interest in standing before Thursday's deadline. And now we move to other stories from outside Nigeria. Indonesia's search and rescue agency said on Wednesday that 92 victims still missing after an Air Asia plane crash could have been swept away or be lost on the seabed after no more bodies were found in the jet's fuselage. Flight QZ8501 went down in the Java Sea on December 28th in stormy weather with 162 people on board. During what was supposed to be a short trip from the Indonesian city of Surabaya to Singapore. So far, just 70 bodies have been recovered. Authorities had hoped that the majority of the passengers and crew would be in the plane's main section, but after several days searching the fuse lurch, they said no more bodies could be located. The military, which has provided the bulk of personnel and equipment for the operation, withdrew from the search on Tuesday due to the failure to find more victims and after several failed attempts to lift the damaged fuselage. The Civilian Search and Rescue Agency has said it will push on with the hunt for at least a week with three aircraft, several ships and divers. The element of the operation to prepare for the next uh, seven days. Aim remains to remain the bodies. Not the fuselage, not the tail, not the cockpit, but the, the body, the victim. The never will not stop, so continue. So the information now clear, the misunderstandings now being uh, clarified. Uh, we are happy with their action, but is it enough? We say no, it's not enough. 
because there is a lot of it is still waiting to be uh, evacuated. And that's it on Core TV primetime news for tonight. But before we go, a recap of our major stories. Reporters at Amnesty International claimed Nigeria's military declined its warning of brutal Boko Haram attacks on the northeast towns of Baga and Mongunu. We also reported that controversial policeman Joseph Umbu has taken over Zone 2 command of Nigeria Police Force and vowed to deal ruthlessly with anybody who crosses his path. Lagos Governor Babatunde Fashala slammed PDP governorship candidate in the state over tax evasion. And that's it. On behalf of the entire news crew, I am Ebolomo Adikuli, wishing you a pleasant night rest. Mm -hmm.